<laughs> All right, my first time helping out a homeless person was when I was 15 years old. I was waiting for a train at the gallery, which is a huge inner city mall in Philly that has its own train stop. And there was a bunch of us waiting in line, and I watched as this homeless woman approached the line and started going from person to person. Can I have some money? Can I have some money? Nobody even looked her in the eye. Nobody paid her any attention. And she didn't even offer any excuses. She just flat out was asking for money. Well, I was towards the end of the line, and the train had just showed up. Now, I was young, and some call it naive, but I had a pretty decent paying job at the time, and I knew that I had some cash on me. And I knew that I wanted to help this lady. I've always really liked helping people, whether it was my mom around the house, or my friends with their chores, or my brother and his buddies when they needed a goalie for their street hockey games. I only had a five and a 10, and I didn't want to give up the 10 only because I couldn't remember how much it cost to get home. So when the lady approached me and asked me with a really soft, like raspy, dry voice if I had any money I could spare, I handed her the folded $5 bill. And I felt really good about that as she walked away and unfolded the bill and then turned back towards me with a look of shock and surprise. I mean, nobody else had even given her the time of day, let alone any money. And I thought, she must be thinking about how kind I am. <laughs> and then she started walking towards me and I got this really great big smile on my face. I said, oh, this is gonna be it. Like, she's gonna be thanking me. And she came real close to me and she said, you're the devil. <laughs> $5 in exchange for a curse. Well, this really shocked me, and my feelings were hurt, and actually I was a little bit more scared than anything, so I got on the train as quick as I could. But this also, this experience also made me cold. I, I became one of those people that would turn their heads when a homeless person would even start to look their way. And I really felt guilty about this, because this is not who I am, but I definitely did not want to be played the fool again. In 2006, I gave birth to my only daughter, and anyone who has ever met her will tell you that she has a kind and tender soul. In fact, her teacher this year told me, you know, when your daughter looks into my eyes, I feel like she's looking into my soul. <laughs> she really cares deeply about the well-being of others, and like me, has never met a stranger. Uh, plus, she's quite the character, but that's a story for another time. In, it was the year after Snowmageddon, and we were li living apart in apartments in Reston. And my daughter was almost five years old. And on the way home um, from her daycare sometimes, we would stop at this really busy gas station and fill up the tank. And that's when we noticed him. His name was John. That's what we'll call him. John was a homeless man who carried his life belongings in six plastic grocery bags. His clothes were weathered. They were discolored, torn, and way too short and everything to hold, protect him from this blistering cold winds that we had that winter after Stomageddon. I would see him sometimes walking around during the day and resting, other times sitting on the brick wall at the library or out front of the bench in front of the Best Buy. And one day, on the way home from picking my daughter up from daycare and filling up the tank, I thought he had disappeared. I was thinking about him and wondering where he had gone to. And then I found out that he was actually making his home behind that crowded resident gas station. I watched him from my warm car as he came from behind the building, and it seemed like he was helping store management out. He would shake out their entry rugs and pick up the trash from the parking lot, and it seemed like some kind of deal they had cut because he would also go inside the warm store, make a few laps around the store to warm up, and then go back behind the building. Well, my daughter, observant and curious as kids her age are, asked, Who's that guy? What's he doing? So I explained to her that he was a homeless man, and then I had to explain what that meant. You mean, he really lives outside in this cold all night long? Yes, honey. You mean, he really doesn't have a place to go home to, no place to live? Nope, and he probably doesn't have much of anything else either. Well, this really affected my daughter, almost to the point of tears. And obviously, as her mother, it upset me to see her this emotional. So when she asked if we could buy him a banana, because that was her favorite fruit, and a, and a cup of hot cocoa, because that's what she liked to drink on hot, cold nights, of course I couldn't say no. But with You're the Devil still etched in my mind from so long ago, <laughs> I was afraid to approach John. I didn't know how he was going to react. You know, but my daughter was so excited. I wanted to give her the opportunity to feel good about that like I used to. So we went inside the store and we got the bag of goods, got a water bottle, got some bananas and a snack and the hot cup of cocoa, and then we approached John. 
And of course, like I said, I was scared and reluctant, but John took the bag graciously. And my daughter told him in her sweet, innocent voice, we got this just for you. And he gave her a big smile and thanked her genuinely. And then he walked back behind the building. When my daughter turned to me and told me that she was glad that we had helped that guy out, I saw the excitement in her eyes and I was happy for her. And although she probably wouldn't have understood why, I wanted to thank her too. Because in that moment, I, part of my heart became warm that was once cold. Thank you.